Welcome to Freedom Forest. We're passionate about growing chemical free vegetables using permaculture methods including No Dig and Back to Eden. On this episode we'll be sharing with you a few of our favourite perennial vegetables including globe artichokes which are not only beautiful but provide a late spring crop and one of our favourite tuber crops Jerusalem artichokes or sunchokes which are great eaten raw, in a salad or made into a soup and plenty of other crops which require no effort as they self seed every year. So here is a great example of a perennial vegetable grown in no dig back to Eden beds. So this globe artichoke has actually pretty much overwintered and if I'd harvested this head when it was ready it would have been ready to eat. It, I think it was the beginning of April. Now you can see there's some other heads coming on thick and fast, another little baby one here and they're actually ready to eat now. Now it's my belief that globe artichokes aren't normally ready until early summer. We did have a really mild winter this year which is probably partly to do with it but I also think that it's the layers in the soil and the extra heat that you get from the back to Eden wood chip top which has probably helped this plant overwinter and come on early. Now you can see here I had three or four of these up here this was obviously the strongest plant but here is an example of the one, one of the ones that died right back and is now just developing again as you would expect for the season. Last season we planted a row of Jerusalem artichokes and naively thought we had harvested them all so we were very surprised to see a sea of green appear back in the early spring. I think we should see if we can pull one up to show you one of the tubers. As you can see another great example of using no dig, how soft the soil is. No digging with forks or other implements required. You could now go and transplant that somewhere else. Or in this case, we'll give it a wash up, put it in a salad or some soup. Talking of soup, one of our next up and coming videos is going to be Laurie in the kitchen turning these bad boys into something delicious. Now let's head into the polytunnel and see Laurie's method of stringing up tomatoes. This tomato is ready to go into the ground and I'm going to show you what to do with the string. I've got a nice long length of berlin twine here. You can use any string or twine that's nice and strong and then I've tied a few knots in the end so that it's got a nice strong knot that's going to help to hold it in the ground underneath the tomato. A handy tip if you're using nylon or plastic string or rope after cutting you can give it a little burn just to stop it fraying. So I pop the string down into the bottom of the hole And then I'm going to get my tomato and pop it right on top. Now don't forget when you're planting your tomatoes you want to plant them nice and deep in your hole so the soil comes right up the neck.
And then I've got some extra manure compost to add in to give my little tomato a good boost. By planting the tomato deep, it helps to give it a deeper root system and keep it nice and stable. And now we pull the rope up, feed it underneath our support bar and then put just a gentle tension onto the twine and tie the rope off. If your tomatoes are already planted, here's an alternative method you can use to string them up in your greenhouse. This soft covered tie is the best thing for tomatoes as it won't damage their stems. Now I've tied the twine nice and firmly to our plant tie. I've gently wrapped the plant tie around the stem of the tomato and I've tucked it underneath a nice strong outward branch to help hold it in place. As the tomato grows bigger we're just going to wrap the tomato around the twine and as it grows it will spiral up the rope keeping it nice and straight. If at any stage you feel you need to add another plant tie to help secure it, then please do. I'll be planting some tomatoes outside later on this month also. If you are too, make sure you plant them with a nice strong stake deep into the hole to give them lots of support as they grow. Now, let's take a look at some of the self-sown vegetables that have started to appear now the weather's warmed up. So in true permaculture style, I let a lot of things run to seed up here and on my other growing beds. So all around me here is going to be a pick a mix of chives, leeks, spring onions and possibly a few normal white onions as well. So we'll let some of it come up, when it gets too much I'll have to weed some of it out but I'll let everything grow on a little bit more so I can see what's what first. Here's another example of something I let run to seed last year. I had several calendula plants in this area which all ran to sea. I love calendula, again, as a companion plant uh, to bring in beneficial insects. But once again, I don't want quite this many. So as everything starts to grow and get bigger, I'll weed out what I don't want and what is not in the right place. But it's great early color, free plants, and just letting nature do its own thing. All this here is self-seeded borage. Now again, there's finding a balance between letting things self-seed and become a pest. I won't want this many borage plants up here, so I will weed a lot of this out, but I will let some of it just run its natural course. Borage is a beautiful plant for bringing in the bees and other beneficial insects. So predominantly, that's why I grow it. But also, you can actually eat the borage flowers and add them to your salads. And they have a really crisp cucumber type flavor. And it adds great color to a dish. So one thing I am excited to see this week is some really good germination from the parsnips, which I sowed a few weeks ago. Now I've got three rows of parsnips at the moment and they were all sown at slightly different times but as often happens with nature 
they are all coming up together. It's always exciting to see the canners start to show themselves after a winter of being dormant under the soil. My next job is to continue picking sweet potato slips that are now large enough to be potted on, ready to be planted out after the last frosts. This is a perfect specimen, ready to be harvested. This is a Carolina Ruby variety. So we'll pick this off now along with any others that are tall enough, roughly between about five and six inches, and get them potted up. I start the slips inside in January from sweet potatoes I grew last season. But don't worry, I'll soon be making a video on how to go through the whole process yourself. On the topic of potatoes, I'd like to share with you a little experiment we started last year, treating them as true perennials. The foliage is already miles ahead of the potatoes we've only just planted in the last few weeks this season, so I'm quite excited to follow their progress and see how they do. If you're like me and you love a taste of the tropics, then you've got to have the hardy banana, Musa Bajju, Japanese fibre banana. These are great, hardy, down to at least minus 15. And if you wrap them over winter with fleece, the stems will also survive. I've only just recently removed the fleece from these for this season, and they've already come up with some beautiful, lush foliage. We would love to invite you to like this video and to subscribe to our channel. It's free and you only have to click the picture of our faces on the screen now.